industry segment. And I'm, I'm just curious. Well, I, I well, you know, Virginia and Fairfax. You know, I, I'd just be really yeah. curious. Well, well, with well, an engaged know, in, community. In Virginia and Fairfax, those real big districts, yeah. they have a board meeting that starts at 10 in the morning and generally finishes at 5 in the afternoon. But that's because of the breadth of the. So, to, to just to that point. Um, I've got another question on the table, but go ahead. <laughs> Oh, God, I'm I sorry. Go, go ahead. I'm going to answer that, and then we'll come back to my, okay. my well, question. Okay, hold that question. You know, the other thing is about somebody doing their own research. That doesn't bother me if it's, if it's solid research. I mean, if they got all the data, and they felt that it's important for them to present it to the data, to you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if we get into a discussion about the role of the board, I, I think a board member does have a responsibility to put on the table how he or she feels about an issue. Mm -hmm. And if you're developing the calendar and he or she feels that it's important, he or she feels it's important, and he or she wants to do the work together, that doesn't bother me. What would bother me is if, I'll pick on Ken, if Ken, if you're t discussing calendars and Ken wanted that done and the rest of the board said, no, we don't need that. If he wants to do it, that's okay. But it's wrong for him to do. What happens a lot of time is a superintendent is scrambling with his staff to provide reports that only Terry, Melissa, you, or Heidi, or Camille, or Ken may want. And when you come to an agreement, when you say we're going to discuss revising our transportation, we're going to discuss a new calendar, whatever it is, the board comes to agreement on what information it wants. There are some board members, and I remember one that came up to me after every one of these retreats and said, Bill, you know, I'm that person. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can consume the entire organization getting the information, and I have a voracious appetite for as much information as possible, and I'm glad you reminded me that everybody doesn't need it, and that the superintendent works for the board and not for me. Because there are some people, and I don't know if you Is it every board member comments on every item, and we go right down the line? We never did that in Wilmette, Deerfield, Manhattan. We didn't even do it at the state board. But here it's a common historical practice. And the sense from, and I was sharing with a board member this morning, a lot more people, at least, let me put it that, a lot more staff members watch our board meetings on TV than I even thought. Um, a, a lot of them do. You know, we've had television in Wilmette and very few people saw it. I mean, very few, because we surveyed people on that. But here, there, and, and so the sense is, too much repetition. Everybody senses they have to make comments. Uh, a couple even mentioned, you know, oh, I would, one board member try to outdo the other. And, and, and I think that adds, in my perception, and that of the leadership team, adds, makes the meetings far longer than they need to be. And it's not necessarily the agenda items, it's the, the fact that everybody has to say a lot. And then sometimes we get off topic. They also talked about getting off topic. But primarily, it's just a lot, uh, as they told me, just a lot of repetition, as I'm repeating myself right now. <laughs> I, think, I, I think a mistake boards me yeah. is feeling an obligation to discuss things right. out of context and without all the information. Yeah. And, you know, as I indicated earlier, sharing the hands. Yeah. Um, I'm finding some boards are becoming much, much more proficient. Um, utilizing their strategic plan. We're going to hold that for the, the, for the meeting we got scheduled for August when we agreed we were going to discuss matters like this. Then you have them in context, so you, 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 you're you not really talking about the same thing three or four times, yes. So are there boards then that just print their year-long board agenda schedule in every packet so that people can see when things are coming back to the board and so then we can say, well, in our conversation on achievement, we can talk about this in that report. Maybe we could ask the superintendent, can you fold in this question into that report? I mean, that you would know, be probably useful. I know boards that, that had an August meeting. There was a planning meeting for the board. Right. And at that meeting, really the board done. decided that the reports that wanted every month, the, when they were going to discuss major items during the year, mm -hmm. how long before the item was discussed, they would discuss it. And, uh, and so anything that came up with student achievement was held off till. Sinead, if we're well functioning on this, when an issue comes up, it should go to Max, 
and he should respond whether he believes it's an operational issue or whether we need to create policy about it, whether it's at a board level. He should do that. We shouldn't have a whole board discussion about whether it's policy or, or well, um, it, not. It, it all depends how it came up. Now you have a policy committee, right? Yes, we minister. do. Because if I recall, you have a, yeah. that you go to the policy committee. If there's a question, that you go to the policy committee. Mm -hmm. The policy committee can determine, is this something we need a policy on or is it operational? You know, I'm, I'm going to say every, every policy restricts how much authority and, and, and responsibility you give to your superintendent. And when you have a policy, you no That's longer correct. can hold the superintendent accountable for decisions made relative to that policy. You can't say, you know, it's a stupid thing, Max. You know, it's smarter to pick up the kid here, but the policy says, you set the policy, that I'm not allowed to have the kid picked up here. So, you know, so. Well, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna push back on you a little bit because um, if every issue that comes up that we don't have a process for goes to the board policy committee no, first. Oh, and you're not saying that, okay. Absolutely not, absolutely okay. not. No, no, I'm saying that if the board feels that an issue should have a policy, if you, what did I say policy was? It sets parameters mm -hmm. around the administration, parents, students, whatever its policy relates to, or the board, your governance policies, limit some of the things you as individuals would like to do, but you have policy that says we can't do it. See, policy has the law, the, the, the force of law. You know that, don't you? I, mean, mm -hmm. I don't want to get that basic, basic. But once you pass a policy, it's a legal, decision that is technically the law and you can go to court over it. So, I mean, I think that's an important So, so policies are not something you, you know, it's just, I got an idea and I want to do something. It's really a, you're taking legal action. A board, the school board is a very unique body in that it's both legislative and judicial. And most other uh, strands of government. But that does not mean that you're, you're the final judicial body because people can go to the courts over to sue over one of your policies or laws. So, um, so I think, you know, policy governance, I don't know, do, do, you, do you attest to operate under policy governance here? Uh, 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 Carver's approach that the superintendent can do anything at all except put some policy. No, no, I don't, I personally. Don't. <laughs> I don't. No. So, so what the policy really is, is yeah. to set the parameters and say these are. Now, if there's an issue that Max feels, or a board member feels, more appropriately should be made by the board than by the superintendent, that's where you have policy discussion. And, right. uh, and so, but if there's not a policy there right now, and it comes up, your superintendent should address it and, and apprise the board of the fact, hey, I made this decision, it probably more appropriately should be made by a policy, but it was an issue that came up, this is what I did, I recommend the policy be developed and the policy committee can determine and say, yes, we think you should have a policy on that. Or, you know, conversation. If, 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 you, don't, if you don't have that culture of risk taken and culture of bubbling up, find a core of teachers who are really dynamic. The Twitter group that you're talking about, I don't even know who they are, but they're Twittering all the time about improving opportunities for kids. And give them a little bit of rain, they're going to convince a lot more people to be like them. And you'll have a more dynamic district. Um, I think the worst thing is the board independently determining how the district's going to implement things. It's okay to determine what, but the teachers, the principals have got to determine the how under the, under the uh, supervision of the superintendent. You know, I think rarely, rarely have I seen that school districts succeed where boards give out edicts because people resent the edicts. They will comply with them until you can change it, just like Congress and everything else. So, uh, you know, there, what, once the board acts, it acts. And you're directed to right. ask a question yeah. often comes up. What if the superintendent disagrees with it? The superintendent has an action. If you pass policies and, and, and resolutions and that superintendent disagrees with, you got a you got a misfit there. Mm -hmm. The superintendent should look for another job. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a board member that doesn't agree with it, 
he's got a, he or she's got a responsibility. And Warren was like, "Better be careful." I say he because you said one he board member. Right? <laughs> <laughs> my he's are my he's are non generic. He. You need that tiny little tidbit of information that I was just really curious about, or can I just let it go? So uh, that's a really important thing. You know, I've said to you guys a couple of times, like, ask the questions that you need in order to vote, mm -hmm. and. I'm not doing that to be mean. I'm doing that so that we don't spend an hour and a half on something that we could have moved quickly through because we all were already supporting it. Um, and this is where maybe asking for reports to be part of the weeklies because there's something you're really curious about or you think it's important that we know about. Um, maybe we need to figure out how to do that a little bit better. Because sometimes we are really interested in something, but it's not going to keep you from voting on it. There's two categories of information. I always say a board and a superintendent have got to come to an agreement as to what you want. Um, the information that you need to make decisions, that, that's critical. And the board, the superintendent has to understand what the board needs to make a decision. Mm -hmm. The other is to be informed and stay informed about the district. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where, at times, there's very uh, significantly different expectations of and I think it is appropriate at times to say, okay, what kind of general information do you want to know about the district? And here's where we come into, you mm -hmm. know, where the kids from college go. Right. Uh, you know, um, you know, there there are things that you know, as protocols, you probably make the board aware immediately if there's a child what? that's uh, there's probably protocols that board members are notified immediately about if a child is oh right right yeah. Is, is, yeah. or if there's an arrest on campus right. Or as you mentioned right. earlier, an unfortunate uh, suicide. Right, right. I mean, I imagine the board members immediately are let know about, uh, mm -hmm. are no, uh, notified about that. But then there's other things that board members may want to be informed about, and and, and I think it's worth and, and that changes by boards. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. you're five people today. Uh, who's up for next election next? I mean, what's I the next election? Well, well, oh, you mean three what's the the cycle. Three, three, so the these two are the yeah. new ones, so the, so the cycle is another year from now. From three of you will be elected. Okay. Yeah. If one of you don't run, one new board member changes the dynamics on the board. Mm -hmm. And really, I mean, I think whenever you have a new board member, and this goes back to why I say it's good to have protocols, uh, I'm also a very firm believer in an intensive and extensive orientation session for board members. I'm a firm believer. The thing that bothers me most is when I go and work on a search or something, or first time I work with the board, and what is it, two-year terms you have or three-year terms? Four. 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 Then I talk to Ten, I talk to Ken, and he says, well, my term's up. I say, you're running again? He says, I sure am. I just finally learned what my job is after four <laughs> years. Mm -hmm. I feel a board member should know what his job is, what his role is, his or hers, excuse me, not his and our job, not the entire. There. <laughs> their, their role. Their role. Her. Yeah. I think they should know what their role is to be a contributing member by their second board member, by the second board meeting. I really am a very firm believer. And, and we had almost, it was almost a 40 hour orientation program yeah. that was spread out over four oh, yeah. meetings, which was we don't have all, all, no, no. all operations, <laughs> instruction, negotiations, personnel, oh, wow. contract, uh, facilities. Mm -hmm. It ended up with a facility tour. And the staff knew so much about it, teachers would bake cookies when they knew the board members were coming around. Because the whole board did it, this yeah. tour. The, the orientation involved the older board members and the administration. Mm -hmm. But the building tour, so the, now you've got more facilities than. <laughs> but, a lot of facilities. Yeah. Yeah. But, 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 you know, it's, and again, yeah. I'm not necessarily mm -hmm. saying that, but at least a comprehensive enough uh, uh, board orientation so that board members feel they're informed. And mm -hmm. then part of that is, what is the communication you need to feel that you're, what you said earlier, Ken, able to contribute? And then have the board discuss that as a board mm -hmm. so that uh, they are provided the information. Any other questions on that? Did you want to comment, Camille, on the five minutes? Yeah. Sure, I'll add my two. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it's, it's good. Since we go around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, we, we used to try to do this informally by staff actually um, timing each person and then after board meeting just handing it back to all the board members just to see how much time and it was an informal way that people kind of monitored themselves but this is this is fine too either way I think uh, 
I think it works. And uh, five minutes is good, 10 is too long, three minutes is probably too short. Um, and I do like the idea that more protocols are more helpful. Um, then new superintendents don't come in and they're caught in the middle of things. I mean, things that I thought were definitely protocols, I guess, um, have been maybe um, more their... Um, practice. Really. They're just practice. And, um, and it's true that if you have the protocol written, it's there and, and then no one feels whatever, you know. And, and I remember coming on the board and a board member sitting down and going through some of these things, but they, they were just practices and they said, oh, okay. You know, right, so. there, there was, you know, I've had this a couple times where I've asked old board members, how is this done? And they'll say, well, I think it's written in protocols. I think that we um, went through the protocols a couple of years ago, and our goal was to have less protocols. And I'm not sure that that was great for us. So if there are things that we're, we don't have protocols about and we feel like we need to, we need to talk about that. Yeah, I, I'm not sure it was about protocols. Slot it in for whatever date. And then, but and board members say, I don't want to be surprised by this website at the end. I want to see iterations yeah. along the way. That's true. Right? That's and true. so but, but but perception changed along the way too and, and what is what are they really gonna report? Is this we had right. a conversation about that. Right. Yeah. So when you say bump, 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 mm -hmm. gone. That's it didn't. We've it also done that with our board policies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now you have all separate meetings. We're paying the price for that. Now we're we're paying the price. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. So, so I just want to reiterate <laughs> three people here felt it'd be helpful to bundle. Maybe what we can do is pick some dates that do we can do. Do our January workshop. Yeah, right? Don't we do a January uh, workshop? Um, I think bundling, based on what I heard, it would be helpful maybe to do it three times a year. Maybe do it. August, maybe do it in November, or maybe do it sometime in the spring. I think if we wait till January to get that whole list, I, I don't know. That seems That's fine. like waiting a long time. But the three people that want to do bundling, what, what do you think? I well, we will have done it in August, talked mm -hmm. about new potential issues. January is our next retreat, sort of. We usually do a mini retreat in January. What yeah, do we call that? Right? right. Yeah, right. And then we do our June. Or, you know, we could do one a little earlier, but that seems, I don't know if that's too far apart. Seems far apart. And also, I'm rethinking the bundling idea. <laughs> After I said we could all bring forth issues, I'm feeling like there may be pressure for us all to yep. bring forth the latest new idea that just hasn't been. I don't feel that pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, but you might. So I'm thinking now maybe it's better to do it as they come up because then it's much more likely to be something that someone's really been stewing about well, just maybe we should think about this for a while i'll yeah. think about i'll think about it with this yeah. in this perspective yeah. how critical is that agenda item exactly. to action i mean can it wait three months can it wait two months and mm -hmm. and when you put it on the parking lot the agenda parking lot 